Why don't get too frisky with it? What's up, YouTube? It's Mountain Metal Anthony. Today, we're installing bollards. So I've already got a bunch of these bad boys installed. The little ones are the ones that we're putting in, the three inchers, I think they're four inch OD with a schedule 40 wall. Um, they're pre-filled with concrete. And then we've just been pouring out an eight, eight inch hole and setting these things in. That way we got two inches on each side. We're digging down about 24 inches and then spacing them out, putting them in the ground. Let me show you how we're doing this. Oh, that's a fucking windy bitch. So I got my friend Bernie over here and he's digging up the holes. But there's a lot of rock, a lot of aggregate in these holes. I mean, you can see the size of the rocks we're pulling out. So that's making it a lot more difficult than it would normally be. For example, like when I do these at a Home Depot in Florida. So I've got my core drill here. I went out and I bought the Blue Rock Z1. And uh, it's a pretty good drill. So the first thing I like to do is turn my water on. And then I'll go ahead and turn the drill on. Cord this out. Um, I think we're all the way through. It really doesn't matter if we're not. We can just kind of jackhammer it out. So we're going to take our fucking cheapo Harbor Freight hammer drill here. This is basically the result right here. And you can see how much it varies. You can see the thickness of the cement right here or the concrete. And you can see the thickness right here. It's only like two and a half, three inches right here. But over here, it's, you know, as thick as maybe six inches. So, you know, it just kind of is what it is. So now uh, Bernie's gonna start digging this one out. And I know a question that some of you guys are gonna be asking who maybe are looking to get into this type of work. How do I determine how big of a hole, how deep, what size bollard, et cetera, et cetera. The reason I chose the dimensions of the pipe, how much concrete I put in, what type of concrete, all of that is based off of past experience. This is exactly the bollard I put in at Home Depot. If it's good enough for them in a large parking lot where you could get up to 34 miles per hour and ram into it, it's good enough for a parking lot that's only 30 feet wide. So that's how I came up with all the dimensions for this before you internet engineers come at me and tell me I should have cut a 24 by 24 square, dug 17 feet deep, and got a 30 foot fucking bollard in there. You don't need all that. That's crazy. It's overkill. And uh, you're going to price yourself out of getting the job. So on the opposite end of the bollards, I welded a steel cap. The reason I did that is because I wanted to pre-fill these with cement and reduce the chance of me making a mess of the job site. So that's what I did is I pre-filled these with cement. I popped a hole in the top of each of these bollards. So that way it could drain, it could properly get down in there. And we vibrated the concrete down into these. So that was pre-done. I also pre-painted them most of the way. I painted them, of course, below surface level to give them a little extra protection from corrosion. Not that it's really gonna make a difference. And I also, uh, you know, obviously got them as prepped as I could. So that way I can just come back and touch all of these bollards up. There is a couple that need a little bit more paint, like this one over here. I ran out. I'm waiting for it to come in the mail, and then I'll come back, and I'll make sure I paint these up nice. I have to come on a day a lot less windy than this, and we also got to beat winter because we have winter right around the corner. So this is the cement we're using. We're using a fast set all crete, and as you can see, structural repair anchoring right there. And also, what does it say right there? Meet state ASMT or ASTM. Stay DOT requirements, so this should be fine. Um, depending on the cure time, with 24 hours, it should be 5,000 psi, you know, or 4,000 psi fluid consistency. So you'd have to do something really fucking ignorant to knock one of these out of the ground. I know this video has been a lot of talking so far, but there's a lot to talk about here. There's a lot going on. I am no expert at putting these bollards in. I've probably put a couple hundred in, maybe. Um, I've removed probably a couple dozen, and I've ran a core drill for maybe a couple hundred holes. I'm sure there's things you guys see me doing wrong with the core drill. But how I came up with the spacing uh, is that 
I think code is 72 inches or less in between. We opted for 60 at the parking spot, in, you know, in between the parking spaces, which you can't see anymore. They're, they're so faded. You can see there's no lines left in the parking lot. And then 50 inches from the next parking space. So that way it gives ample room for somebody to get in between that's over four feet. Let's get back to this. Bernie's gonna keep cleaning that hole out. Uh, we're only cementing three in today because I ran out of anchoring cement. They didn't have enough at the Home Depot, uh, but they should be getting more in this week for me. And I'm gonna core the rest, but not break them out. I'm just gonna core them so that way when I come back, it's one last tool I have to bring with me to finish this job. Something else? No, it's just that concrete was slanted. See uh, how it's slanted back? Yeah, you just have to jackhammer into it. Yep. Well, let's just get this little chunk out of here. Get too frisky with it. <laughs> yeah, kids, that's why you don't panic. Sir. About 200 pounds. <laughs> it's a lot of things. It ain't 200 pounds, though. <laughs> a little bit high so Bernie's just tapping it down a little bit uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna level them and when you level these you want to keep it simple I see a lot of guys make all this crazy ass bracing and they they do a lot of extra work that really isn't necessary so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a two by four that I've cut well that Bernie cut to about four foot and we're gonna put it next to it Now we'll go ahead and level it out. I'm just gonna use a four foot level. You can also use the uh, use a posted pipe level, uh, which I would prefer, but I don't know where it is, so. What do we got? Oh, Dan, that's dead nuts. Yep, we're gonna leave that. Damn. Oh. Is that dead nuts too? Close enough for, close enough. For government work. All right, so. Uh, that was easy. <laughs> usually a little, a little more time consuming than that. So now we're gonna go through and level the rest of them. This is what we've been dealing with. You know, I'm not used to that Florida, it's just sand or clay. Yeah, that's good, that's good. That's good. Now that we have all three of these leveled out, we're gonna go ahead and start backfilling. All right, so I've opened the corner of the bag. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dump a little bit in. I'm not gonna go crazy. So what Bernie's doing is just mixing it until it looks good. We're not going to go crazy trying to get the ratio right. We're just going to mix it until it looks good. A little spritz at a time nothing crazy you don't want to put too much in because this shit has a tendency to fucking get a soupy real fucking fast we're almost there yeah that's probably it right there we're close yeah it needs a little more Out of it, yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's ready to pour. Yeah, that's it, Bernie. You see Bernie's just filling that in. Unfortunately, we do have a cavity underneath of this one. So uh, it's tucking up a little bit of our concrete here. It's probably just about the perfect amount there, huh? Damn near. Yeah. Keep running into a problem where a cavern underneath the concrete is open because whoever did the dirt work at this property didn't properly compact it. Um, and so what happened is over the years it settled and the issue we're running into is that the concrete is just flowing basically underneath the slab here. So we've been trying to keep it from doing that, but it's just impossible by thickening, um, thickening the mixture. So we are short on concrete on these two bollards right here. So what we're going to have to do is just probably sack some rocks around it temporarily. What we opted to do was fill this one halfway or use half the bucket to fill this one and use the other half to try to fill that one. So it kind of creates a little bit of a problem because we are leaving an open hole, which you never really want to do, especially in a public space. But we're just going to cover it up with rocks, caution tape it, and leave it caution taped until I can go get more anchoring cement. Okay, it's been about four months since I did this job. I wanted to make the return video a little ways away so you guys can see that these things are working. As you can see, they're not cracked out at all. They've been rammed a bunch. All of them have. Everything looks great, though. Unfortunately, because of that void I found underneath the sidewalk, she did have to go and hire somebody to rip her old sidewalk out and uh, redo it. But there was about a one-foot void underneath the sidewalk on that side of the building. So I guess that's just what she opted to do. All right, guys. I hope this video helped you out. I hope it helps you out with your baller job. Like I said, not everything I did was probably exactly textbook, but it came out great. It's doing exactly what it was supposed to do. The customer's stoked. And uh, if you'd like to see the video of how I did the estimate, it's right here up in this corner. The links in the description below will have the tools that I used in the video. So if you liked it, like it. If you didn't, well, go fuck yourself.